Welcome back. You're watching RT. Now, the U.S. certainly isn't the only country in economic turmoil. Greece now is on the brink of collapse. And how are these economic catastrophes tied together? And how will economic collapse there affect our already troubled economy here? Here to help me sort this out is economic blogger and RT contributor, Dimitri Kofinas. Kof Dimitri, um, so how are these two economic catastrophes tied together? Well, the most thing that, common thing they have in, uh, in common is the debt. So the U.S. and Europe are both drowning under a mountain of debt. Banks don't want to take write-downs. They don't want to liquidate debt. They don't want to uh, deleverage their, because they're afraid if they do that, that's going to cause a, a, a chain reaction of bankruptcies. So I think that's, that's sort of the problem that they're both facing. Right. You know, in Slovakia, um, one of the European Union nations is not doesn't seem to be so concerned about the problems in Greece. The country stalled the expansion of the bailout fund to rescue the eurozone. Why aren't they on board? Well, one of their the uh, minority leader for one of their parties um, had came out recently, did an interview with their Spiegel, I think it was, and he talked about how the country basically did not believe, or he did not believe that um, that the EU could solve a problem of too much debt by adding more debt. Um, and he made the other argument, which is that Slovakia is one of the poorer countries in the, in the Eurozone, and that although they can sympathize with what Greece is going through and what some of the other countries are going through, he's not about to sacrifice his country's national interests on the altar of, uh, of the Eurozone and of the European technocratic dream. Right, you know, and that the failure of Slovakia Slovakia to be a part of a united response to that 17 member states of the European Union um, not acting together. Um, is this, some, this is something that troubles billionaire investor George Soros. He and dozens of other business leaders are urging Eurozone leaders to take swift action. He says all 17 countries must act together in order to save the Eurozone. And he says if that doesn't happen, he warns that this will lead to the collapse of the global financial system. Is this, well, is this a doomy, gloomy consequence inevitable? Well, you know, George has been, George Soros has been talking about this for a long time, and I agree with him, but uh, it, it, it's important to note that he's been talking about this at least since 1998 when you had the, the, the financial crisis, 97, and he wrote a book in 98 uh, about this specific fact. He thought that the global financial system could not continue the way it was architected because uh, capital flows had become global, but economies were still national. Uh, I think that we are at that point now where he's correct. He thought it would happen earlier, but I think we're there now. He's been pushing this for Europe and for the globe more generally. The idea of, okay, you've got all these different na national economies. Capital is international, but uh, labor is still somewhat national. There are all these different constraints. We need to unify uh, regions. We need to unify globes. Uh, create common currencies, common fiscal treasuries, and that's what he's advocating for Europe, and he thinks that's the only solution. That is the solution for the European Union if you want a centralized government and a centralized uh, banking system. Um, but it's not the solution if what you want is more freedom and more national autonomy. So that's the, that's the thing. People have to decide what they want. Do they want more autonomy, or do they want a, a greater kind of super state? Okay, right. And, you know, here in the U.S., I mean, why should we care what happens um, over there in Europe? What happens to the Eurozone and to the Euro? Um, if, if they do um, collapse, what kind of consequences will we be seeing here? As, well, as Soros warns that there, this will lead to this global meltdown. Well, there's the practical side of if they collapse, what would happen immediately? There's the banking crisis, for example. There's counterparty risk that European banks have with other, other American banks with the derivatives market. There may not necessarily be direct exposure, but the whole idea of counterparty risk is you may have a deal with one bank and they have a deal with another bank, and that bank is exposed to another bank, and there's a quick contagion effect. Um, so that could cause a collapse in the banking system or some sort of a freeze again in capital markets like we saw in 2008, and that could result in uh, similar sorts of uh, contractions in GDP and things like that that we saw uh, back with the original financial crisis. But in terms of philosophically, I think the debate that's going on in Europe is a debate that happened in some ways in the U.S. Um, at different times with the Articles of Confederation in 1913. You had different debates like that. And it's really, d during periods of crisis, do we want to advocate for a solution of more control, more centralization, or do we want to create decentralization? Because, let's, for example, in, te in the technology space, there is... Uh, when you build a system, you want fail-safes. You don't want to have one event trigger a meltdown in the entire system. 
um, although you get more efficiency with more centralization, you also get uh, greater instability in the long term or more, you know, uh, volatility, whatever, in the long term. The system is more prone to breaking apart, and when it breaks, the whole system breaks. That's the problem with centralization. So I think there's an interesting philosophical debate being had in Europe right now, and, uh, and there are people that want to have people that want to have more centralization, like George Soros. Uh, and then there are people like, let's say, Nigel Farage in, uh, in U the UKIP, the United Kingdom Independence Party, over in Brussels, and he wants, he wants to have more national autonomy. Um, well, Dimitri, thank you for your thoughts on that. I'm going to ask you more of a lighthearted question. Um, we have a new show coming up on RT with That's Lauren right. Lister. Tell us a little bit about that. So, yeah, the show's called Capital Account with Lauren Lister. I'm producing the show. Uh, Lauren's hosting it. And, um, and it's, it's basically a finance economic show. We have some lighthearted fun stuff, um, as well as some really great guests coming on in our first uh, few weeks. So I'm really excited about it. We've been working on it for the past few weeks, and I think people should definitely tune in. Great. And when is the kickoff date? The kickoff date is the 19th of October, next Wednesday, uh, 4:30. Go. Uh, the, sh the air shows live. The show airs live. All right. Something to look forward to. Well, that was economic blogger at RT contributor Dimitri Kofidas.